Hello, this is Faith at Faith and Books, and I thought I would do an update on my June reading, which really got derailed because right as June began, June 2nd, I got hit by sciatica really severely. I'm just now, today, feeling better. Uh, so that's been three weeks. And then my uh, father-in-law uh, went into hospice care, and then he um, passed away and we had the funeral this past Monday and we have my older son and his wife and daughter are in town for the week because their week is sandwiched between Monday was the funeral for my son's grandfather and right now they're at a memorial service for her grandfather who passed away from COVID in February I believe uh, my father-in-law Leonard um, got COVID just after Thanksgiving and never quite recovered. So um, I think that really was what knocked him out. It just, he couldn't recover from it. He went into congestive heart failure. So um, anyway, so that's, June's been crazy. It's been really crazy. Um, so I had all these high aspirations. For instance, I was going to read Paradiso by Dante. I read one canto and I just didn't have, I was in too much pain. I couldn't sleep at night. Uh, so I was dragging during the day or just napping. And it was really bad that first week. Um, and then, um, so I just couldn't focus. I just couldn't focus. So... Um, I'll tell you what I did read. <laughs> it's changed from what I planned. So I planned to read Becoming Madison because I want to do that presidential read-along. Have I been in communication with anybody who's doing the presidential read-along? No. Um, but, you know, I'm with them in spirit. And I enjoyed the first half of it. I was really getting into it in that first week when I was in so much pain. For some reason, I found it really absorbing. But then I think because my days and nights was really starting to be mixed up and I was really tired and sleep deprived, it started not making sense to me. Like all of a sudden he was talking about Monroe being his friend. And I was like, when did we meet Monroe? I mean, I knew they were neighbors, but it just seemed like he assumed you know, a prior understanding of their relationship, which I had missed somehow. And then, and then he started, he was like doing these financial speculations and he was trying to get Jefferson involved in them. And I didn't understand why he was having financial problems and that he needed to do that. I, so I felt like I wasn't paying enough attention. Like I couldn't pay enough attention to the facts and it was confusing me. So I stopped. But I think after my guests leave, which I think they're leaving Monday morning, um, you know, my son and his wife and child, my grandchild, um, and she's expecting again in October. Um, I think I'll pick this up again. I'll try to finish it by the end of June. So I was enjoying it. And the best part, the most interesting part, is yet to come. It's about him helping to craft the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Um, all the, the first half is just about his life and all the influences, why he took particular positions that he did and that sort of thing. So so anyway, I'm going to continue that and I hope to get that read in June. Then something really fun happened, a great distraction. Mark at Book Time with Elvis started this Euro 2020 or 2021, whichever you want to call it. Um, it's called Reading Europe 2021. And they had to postpone the Euro um, soccer or football tournament from last year so they're playing it this year and um, it's all these countries in Europe and he would draw a country for you and you had to read something by an author or maybe set in that uh, an author from that country or maybe set in that country he's pretty generous about the rules um, and so he drew Finland for me so that was exciting because I had been really wanting to uh, reread the Moomin Troll series um, and so I read Finn Family Moomin Troll because my team is Finland. Finland won their first match against Denmark. Denmark had this great, very frightening event where um, Christian Eriksen had a cardiac arrest. 29-year-old, um, you know, athlete had a cardiac arrest and they had to bring him back with the defibrillator. It was right there on the field. I mean, his teammates were sobbing. His wife was freaking out. I mean, it was really horrifying. We really thought he was dead. Um, but uh, but unfortunately, this, so then they decided to play. And I didn't see that part because I didn't realize that they had decided to 
play, a continued play after he got to the hospital and he was stabilized. Um, and they lost. And But Finland, I think this is the first time Finland has qualified. They did 22... Um, Denmark did 22 shots. I know nothing about soccer, so you're gonna you're gonna tell from this. 22 shots at the goal to make a goal, and the um, goalie, the Finnish goalie, stopped them all. And then one, and I can't remember his name, Puki, P-U-K-K-I, I think was that the guy who did the one goal for Finland. They got one shot and they made it in. So Denmark wasn't playing so well. It might not have been a good idea to continue the match after such a shock because I think Denmark is the better team uh, and then um so anyway I for Finland I read this one I read and I thought this was the first one in the series but I was wrong it's not the first one in the series um and I started did I get that other book out oh I don't have it with me I started Comet in Moomin Land uh, Moomin yeah Comet in Moomin Land which it, I thought came after this, but really it was written before. And there is a slight difference in the writing style. This is this is something she wrote later, and it's more subtle and more tongue-in-cheek, and the characters are a little gentler. Whereas um, in *Common in Moominland*, they're they're a little bit. It's a little bit rougher. It, I really noticed the change in in the in the atmosphere a little bit. So. Anyway, so that's what I read for Finland, and I'm going to try to continue to read the series. If Finland wins against Belgium, they're playing tomorrow, um, I will read Comet in Moomin I did, I did start it, um, but then I, I only read the first couple of chapters, so I'll complete that. But Belgium is a really, really good team. I think they've won their matches. I, I'm not sure. I don't keep track. What's really fun about this is there's this great boxer group, and there's people from all over the world talking about this and the, trying to find books to read for, from the different countries. And I haven't been able to stay that involved. For one thing, my TV, the uh, it's hard to... The direct TV wasn't working well, and I had to we had to get ESPN. And I don't know what my husband did, but somehow we can now watch it, except I share that TV with the five-year-old, and so if he wants to watch his Pokemon movie, I can't watch the uh, the match. So I haven't been able to to really stay on top of everything. Plus, with having guests and everything else going on, I just can't spend all day watching various soccer matches. But I am going to watch Finland versus Belgium tomorrow. Um, so then Finland played Russia, and Russia won, which is so sad because if you know anything about the Finnish-Russian history, fin Finland deserves to win every every time. Um, so I just, because I don't have a concentration span right now, I'm reading children's books and short stories. So for Russia, because I since Russia beat Finland, I had to read something from Russia. I read two short stories. I read one by Chekhov called uh, Lady with the Toy Dog. And I didn't really care for it. It was pretty meh. It's it's one of those stories about bored bourgeoisie people having affairs because they're so bored they don't know what to do. Um, and I didn't really like anybody in it. It, it really didn't do anything for me. Um, I know I'm probably... You know, you know, I, I apologize for not being sophisticated enough. Um, and then I read uh, How Much Land Does a Man Need by Leo Tol Tolstoy. And this was well told. It was, uh, you know, well written and everything was pretty, um, what's the word I want? It was pretty trite. It was about a guy who obviously he, he wants more land and the devil is going to tempt him. And you could sort of see the end coming. But it was, you know, it was a, like a fable. Um, so uh, it was interesting to learn, though, about kind of Russia. And uh, he's getting land from these people called the Bakirs, which I guess were this, um, oh, I can't talk, a migratory kind of tribe that travels the steppes. So that was interesting. Anyway, so I read both, both those short stories for Russia. And... Um, because I'm anticipating that Belgium, because it's a better team, will beat Finland, I have already started reading my Belgian book, and I'm sticking with the children's literature or lighter literature theme. And so um, I'm reading A Dog of Flanders, which was, I forget when it was written, but it's 
turn of the, oh, maybe 1872 or something like that, in the late 1800s, and um, it's a well-known children's classic. So I started reading that, um, and unfortunately I'm reading it on my Kindle and trying to divorce myself from Amazon, but it was, I got it free. Um, um, so yeah, so that's when I'm, I've already started reading it because I really think Belgium's going to win, but if not, it, it's one of those children's classics that I've wanted to read for a while, so I'll, I'll keep reading it. Um, and I'll also read the more of the Finn Family Moomin Troll books because I've been wanting to read, read those as well. And then let's see, what else did I want to read? So I, so I, for now, I DNF'd Paradiso. I don't think I'm going to get to it till August, but I do want to read the whole three parts of the Divine Comedy. And Paradiso is the one I haven't read. I, for both Inferno and Purgatory are, yeah, were rereads for me. So I really want to get to Paradiso. So, but I think I'm going to try in August to finish that. I'm going to try and finish Madison, the Madison book by the end of the month. Um, I also started reading um, a book called The Story of the Jews by Simon Shama. This was on my Kindle as well. With my husband had downloaded it. He started to read it, but he said, "I read this book because I don't really know if I like it or not." And I started to read it, and I don't know. I, there's something about Simon Shema. I, I don't trust him because I feel like he wants to be salacious about things. He wants to shock us with with tidbits of information that that will turn things. I don't know. There's just a little bit of that element in there. He's a little bit melodramatic or he's a little I don't know there's something about his approach that makes me not quite he's entertaining but I don't know if I trust him entirely I think I probably do but I don't know so I kept the whole time I was reading I was like I wish I had a more solid understanding before reading him like I felt like he was going to influence me in a way that I didn't I don't know so I I did and plus I wasn't in the mood to read um to read it when I was in pain with the sciatica, so I just dropped it. And instead, what I read, I did a reread of a Georgette Hare book called The Quiet Gentleman. And that was a book that I thought it was so so. Um, and I hadn't reread it, it was one of the few that I hadn't reread. And so I, so I decided to give it a second try. I mean, I enjoyed it the first time, but I thought it was like, you know. A C level book as opposed to an A, um, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was about um, the quiet gentleman. Is this uh, what is he? Now I'm forgetting his rank. Earl was he an earl? Um, uh, Saint uh, Saint Earth. Yeah, he's he's Saint Earth is his last name or whatever his official noble nobility name is. Um, Saint. Earth, E-R-T-H, weird. Um, his first name is Jervas, so they called him Jer, his friends. Um, and he was returning from the Napoleonic Wars. He'd been in the army for a long time, so he was a real army guy. And his father had passed away, and he had inherited this vast estate. And But the thing was that his mother had left father when he was just like one year old to run off with somebody and then she had died a few years later so the father like never would hear her name he didn't want to see his son so Jeravas was raised by um right relatives like his aunt or something like that um so he was really distant from his father everyone sort of expected the father to like will lots of other stuff to his other children because then he married again and had two children, a daughter and a son. The youngest son, Martin, is a big part of the story. Um, so anyway, the Earl comes back, and he's a. What was unusual is he did not have gray eyes. Georgia Hare always makes her, her dashing, you know, young heroes have gray eyes, but he had blue eyes and blonde hair. He was very quiet. Uh, of course, he dresses very well because that's the way Georgia Hare always does things. He, she's really into that Regency style of dress. And um, so he, he comes to, you know, claim his estate, but Martin, his stepbrother, has sort of been raised to believe that he's going to inherit it all. And they really thought that uh, the Earl would die you know, either of disease or in a battle. He'd, he'd been wounded twice and survived both times. So, 
So it's the tension that happens when he comes back and his stepmother is, it, a lot of it is kind of a rip off of Jane Austen. So his mother is very, the stepmother is very um, similar to Lady Catherine de Bourgh in uh, Pride and Prejudice. And um, there's all sorts of little uh, references, like one of the under grooms, last name is Wickham. There's somebody named Mrs. Marple. Um, just just throws in weird things like that. Um, and there's some lines that are just pulled right from Pride and Prejudice. Um, there's even like a, a, a sort of a brown nosing, uh, not very bright, um, uh, what's the word I want? Reverend, no, what is he? Vic, no. You know, somebody of the Church of England who, Mr. Clown, who's who's uh, constantly brown nosing um, the the widow, the dowager, just like Lady Catherine de Bourgh and Mr. Collins. Um, so there's a lot of fun stuff like that. If you know Jane Austen, you pick up on this stuff. Um, but it's really well written, and um, it's got romance in it. It's a mystery. Somebody's trying to kill the Earl, and we don't know who, who it is. It seems like it's Martin, the jealous younger brother, but we don't know. And um, it, it's got a lot of comical characters in it, and there's a love interest for the Earl, uh, this sort of plain, very sensible woman uh, who happens to be staying there. Um, as a companion to um, the Dowager, whatever her name was. So it was a fun read. I really enjoyed it. The one problem I have with some of Hare's novels is that she doesn't quite wrap things up as well as could be. They're very play-like. You can imagine them. I don't know why they don't make plays or... Well, I know she didn't... Um, Georgia Hare didn't like the idea of the stories being made into movies because people had attempted it and did a really bad job and so she wrote that she didn't want anything to be made into movies they would make excellent excellent um period uh series that it would be great um but why can't they do plays they should this they really read like plays almost there because you know all this converse she's great at dialogue really funny dialogue and you can just picture them in the rooms. You know, she describes what the room looks like and how the people are standing and what they look like. And it's really very play-like. Um, anyway, I enjoyed it. And I forget what I, I was going to say something. I can't remember now what it was. But um, anyway, I enjoyed The Quiet Gentleman by George Ed Hare. So that was a fun read. And now I have started, well, I started The Dog of Flanders, but I've also started a Coot Club by Arthur Ransom. And this is just going to be a summer read. I'm just going to read it at leisure. I don't care if I finish it in June or July, whatever. I'm just going to uh, read it. It's already really enjoyable, but I've only read the first chapter. But it just right away, he's such a good writer, Arthur Ransom. Just draws you in right away. Um, lovely, lovely stories. So I think that's it. I've been trying to keep up with my Bible in a year, but I haven't really been reading it. I've been listening more just listening just because it was I don't know it was just hard to to read it and listen at at different times when I could find the time and the focus to do it so but I don't like just listening because I do not retain things as well if I just am listening so maybe today I've stopped doing it first thing in the morning too because we've had house guests and I usually go downstairs and do it and I don't want to accidentally wake the baby or anything so um Maybe when they leave, I'll start listening to it in the morning, get back to my regular routine where I'm reading it as I listen, because I retain a lot more. I also have missed my uh, Christian Social Justice Book Club two weeks in a row, because I'm sitting for so long. I, haven't, I don't sit very long, <laughs> um, but I'm feeling better today. I really am feeling better. I even went grocery shopping for the first time in two weeks. Yeah. So, yeah. So... So that's it for me. Um, it's I'm having so much fun with this um, reading Euro, uh, reading Europe 2021, and they're talking about doing it for the Africa Cup, which is supposed to happen in January if COVID doesn't mess things up, and Cameroon is supposed to be hosting it. So I'm excited about that because, I mean, it's it's a real adventure trying to find stuff to read, um, from from even just Europe, right? Like, what are you going to read from North Macedonia? Or it's just hard on some of the countries in, in Africa. I think it's even going to be 
more difficult to find stuff, but you know, that's, that's the thrill, right? <laughs> to find something to read. So, okay, so I've babbled for 20 minutes. Oh, by the way, I've tried to upload things, uh, videos three different times. Two times I tried to do B tag and both times I just couldn't form words correctly. <laughs> and so I just delete it. And then yesterday morning I did a garden update and, but I forgot to upload it. And then I went to upload it this morning and it disappeared. So, so I've tried, but I just haven't been able to get anything up. So, all right, that's it from me. I hope you are doing well and I'll talk to you later. Happy reading. Bye.